Hey kids, I'm Nate of Mammoth Press, and this is the Mammoth Press Multicade. Hey guys, guess what? It's done. It's finished. Um, and it's actually been finished for a little while. But uh, there was a couple last pieces that I needed to put together and there's a lot of tinkering around with the software that honestly I'll probably spend the rest of my life figuring out because there's a lot to it. But the good news is we got the marquee up and it's pretty rocking. So let's actually go over the dimensions and, and, I'll, and I'll bring you up to speed since we last left off. All right, so here it is, guys. You know, the Mammoth Press multi kit. Really, I didn't know how far into the artwork I was going to get. I didn't really know what my options were at the time. I actually considered um, the uh, just just painting it black and with chrome. I, either way, just just having an arcade cabinet was kind of a little extreme to me, especially building something of my own like this. I mean, I've designed a lot of things, and I've. And I've seen it structurally built, you know, with a lot of different materials, but I never actually made anything with my own hands out of wood like this before. So uh, that in itself was an achievement, but as I got further and further into it, every little achievement inspired the next. And eventually, I just kept going until I had, well, what you have in front of us. So this very specific stats on this, uh, it's about 72 inches tall, I think 72 and a half with, uh, with the casters under it, they're on carpet, but you can maybe see underneath there, there's two, there's four casters. They stand about a half inch off the ground. Um, they just really help to move the cabinet around. Um, we still had to lift it up the stairs, Chanel and I, and it was hard. So I'm not ac actually sure how much it weighs, but it probably weighs close to 200 pounds. Um, it's, it's a heavy dude, but even though it's 72 inches, which is pretty standard for most I think arcade units maybe a little shorter 65 to 72 um, and being a four player cabinet each player equipped with an eight-way San Sanwa uh, joystick and uh, each character each, each player actually comes with eight uh, buttons but I went with the six button configuration for the for player one and two and then four on three and four um, classically that's Pretty much all you need. Actually, that's more than what you need for a four-player cabinet. Um, there's actually uh, things that I have learned since I built this uh, that I'll go into in a little bit that uh, makes me kind of feel like maybe I should have thrown in the other two or at least some extra buttons, but um, it's all just kind of bonus from there. Uh, but you got four eight-way joysticks, LED, uh, LED buttons, and then a fully uh, LED lit roller ball, you know, track ball. And of course each player has its own select and start or, you know, coin and, and player starts. And get a, get a look at what that looks like underneath. Now these are interesting cables here. I actually had to splice these because technically all the buttons you see go into a USB uh, board. And each of these boards plugs in with a USB cable into the back, into the into the uh, Raspberry Pi that I have stationed in the back. And that basically acts as a USB controller. It's pretty simple how it's kind of set up, but this is kind of interesting. I didn't really plan for, but I threw in um, a button on either side of the control board uh, <laughs> uh, for pinball flippers, and they work amazingly. However, uh, they go into the L2 and R2 spots on player one, right? Well, the cables don't really go that long, so I kind of grabbed other cables and spliced them with electrical tape, and it works really well. <laughs> it works great. Um, I'll actually have some uh, some episodes of me playing uh, some pinball games, just kind of show you how you know how well it works. But looking at the sides, I have to excuse my turtle fandom um, you know for being a four player cabinet it's actually very low profile and I went over this before um, but a lot of this had to do with the fact that you know when we were kids and we were in you know in the 90s going to you know Aladdin's castle or showbiz pizza or whatever you know I mean they would have 
these four player arcade units, right? And all of them commanded presence, right? They, they were huge, they were enormous. They, they took up so much space and they weighed so much, so much that once they placed them down, once they set them on the floor, they didn't move because it took a whole team to move them. A lot of that was just because the hardware that was in them was insane, right? Especially in, in the monitors and the TVs that went in them. The, the thing is, is that now, nowadays, you know, technology has advanced. We get faster, stronger, better, but much smaller, right? To where we don't need as much technology in these things to get them to, you know, to make them happen. So to go from a massive, I don't know, even 20 inch CRT television with a glass screen to a 32 inch flat screen that weighs next to nothing, there's really no need for that wide profile monstrous cabinet. Now it kind of worked in their favor Zorak, what are you doing down there? Oh. It worked in their favor because, you know, the bigger and more monstrous the arcade was, the more of, a, of a attention they grabbed from kids, you know, to come and, and pump quarters into them. But, but uh, by the time I came around to making my own cabinet, um, I mean, sure, the control deck needed to be a pretty good size, but so long as the profile was wide enough to offset the balance of the weight on the front end, we were good and that's the way I kind of went so in a way this is kind of a, an homage to the original arcades as far as their sheer size but also the fact that you know some newer arcade designs such as like arcade one up who are specializing in creating these these uh, classic arcade games but much smaller low profile so people can put them in their bedrooms or in their office um, this was kind of like I kind of met in the middle, you know, I'm a tall guy kind of big I'm not, you know, I know I'm kind of a fat guy too and you know I, I mean all of us kids are grown up now myself and my adult friends now or we're, we're bigger people so We got enough room to play but also doesn't take up so much real estate in our office So on social media I've been posting uh, quite a few pictures of, of the machine as I'm playing with the software and just trying to get certain features to work. And uh, one question that I've been asked uh, several times is, you know, how I go about getting the artwork. Um, and that's a big deal because there's, you know, a lot of artwork that's that's on here compared to when we were just starting off. And I, I originally figured that I was just going to paint it black and call it good. Uh, but it just so happens that being a graphic artist, like I am full time, um, you kind of learn um, some cool tricks of the trade and you really you get to meet some really interesting people specifically printers <laughs> um, the artwork is actually designed by myself uh, but I was able to um, get the artwork printed by a friend of mine at a local uh, print shop actually it's the uh, the community college here in Springfield OTC Jeff Warner and his crew uh, were happy to help me out um, by taking my artwork and printing it onto like full-fledged vinyl um, Vinyl printers are pretty easy to come by, I think. I mean, you should be able to find them in, in you know, local print shops and stuff in your area. Um, specifically, this vinyl was a white printable vinyl, but he also put a, uh, uh, like a coating on the outside of it, like a protective coating, which saved me a lot because I didn't have to put um, like acrylic or anything on the outside, especially on top of the button controls. Uh, but because of Jeff and his crew, I was able to come up with some really cool artwork that he was able to print pretty easily. And uh, it's basically a big vinyl sticker. <laughs> um, the process of putting it on the sides and on the front is, you know, it, it's, it's a learning curve. Um, you have to be careful. Um, but having that laminate on the outside actually helped because it stiffened uh, the paper or the the vinyl enough to where if it stuck to itself while I was doing it it was simple enough to pull apart but um, I'm sure my wife had a good time watching me like wrestle with this really big sticker that if I stuck to anything it was a mess but it's absolutely worth it so again thank you Jeff and your crew for for helping me out on this it was a, a, a really big deal it, it wouldn't be anything like it is without you anyways um, let's get into the details about about that artwork so here I started with um, in SketchUp is really the bit the the base uh, program that I use to really build everything that we see um, in this program I was able to build it to scale um, everything had a measurement 
Uh, I wrote them all down on paper pretty much, and I just kind of uh, guessed and checked if it would work. Um, but SketchUp was really where this all began. Um, SketchUp is a, is a program that you can get a trial version for free. Um, there are different ways of, uh, there are different, I guess, licenses that you can use. But as you can see, you know, you start off with just a drawing, and then you can expand the pieces out to actually make it piece by piece. In fact, it can even organize all of your pieces into components where when it's all said and done and you like what you see, you can uh, get an exploded view of, of, of everything and uh, it'll give you the actual uh, measurements for each piece that you designed and how, it, and how it works. And again, this was built to scale. So transitioning from this, which granted at the time I didn't have the artwork for it, um, I did this after I did the artwork, but it was just a, a straight white model. But once I got the model I needed, and I got all the measurements I needed from here, I plugged those into Illustrator. And in Illustrator, I just went through and I took all those individual pieces and I made and I jotted down the sizes that I knew I, I needed. Um, this would double for, well this would actually work for two different reasons. One. Um, knowing the size of the sheets of wood that I was getting I could nest these shapes into each piece and I kind of went over this before while I was building it but um, it gave me an idea of what pieces and how many pieces were gonna fit on each board um, so I knew how many boards to get it was you know kind of broke it down for me but also having these images or having the line work of each individual piece drawn to scale I was able to use them as templates for my artwork so these this was the actually the measurements that I ended up sending to Jeff at OTC um, with the artwork just just for quotes um, I, you know these were the dimensions and he was able and typically most printers go by square inch or square foot back probably square inch um, so this is all he needed for for print I told him um, in this case it would be a laminate printed vinyl um, and these are only some of the pieces. These are all the only pieces that have artwork on them, but obviously there's more to it. But when I sent them the artwork, um, this is this is what it looked like. Um, each side was made independently, and then I altered. I had to flip, you know, flip, uh, flip the uh, the view from left to right because you don't want to have two right shoes or two left shoes when it comes to the side pieces. So. Um, Everything was pretty self-explanatory after that. Like it, it just it, you, you had all the pieces. You know, you had to build the pieces. But once you had the pieces, the all, pieces all come together into a nice little puzzle. And so this is where I'm at right here. Is is just coming up with the pieces um, because I had the measurements from the SketchUp drawing and I had them transferred in the line work here. I just use those as my cookie cutter, so to speak, my template to apply artwork to. And this is. These are dimensions that I'll use. I can go in. You can kind of see there's the uh, the Mammoth logo underneath some uh, some high res artwork underneath, and then I have the actual Mammoth logo under it. Um, and it's just you just put them all together in pieces like a like a puzzle. <laughs> um, so these are, this is the side artwork, and this again to scale. Um, and then here's uh, the uh, the control board artwork. Um, this actually was handy for a couple of reasons because obviously all of these lines here uh, that you see that outline the buttons that's not on the artwork in fact none of these are these are basically what we call die lines these were guides for me to drill holes into um, into the the actual control board um, the, the, basically it was just a reference just give me an idea of like okay here's my buttons and these pluses is where my drill is going to go. And this is actually, if I, um, kind of neat here. If I get rid of all the artwork, yeah, here we go. This is actually what I sent, um, to, uh, to Office Max. Yeah, Office Max printed this for me. Um, and this is what I actually use to align all my buttons, um, on the on the board before ever be, long before I painted it before it had anything else on it it was just this shape here this this outline um, I went, had office max uh, print this off for me I took this with a big sheet of carbon paper 
um, laid it underneath, and I went over all of these lines. Actually, I just went over the crosses because those were the, the the crosshairs. Basically, those were the only things I really needed. But I went over all of these and these lines and the, the boxes here um, with a ballpoint pen, <laughs> and uh, did like a really kind of old school. Um, transfer like the old uh, carbon copy carbon paper transfer directly onto the wood and this is what I used as a reference um, for me to drill my holes so I drilled where my crosses were because um, those were going to be my buttons and uh, I uh, added a little bit of extra room here to each of the buttons like this is the actual button here but then here like on the insides here but then on the outsides that was the uh, that chrome ring that goes around the outside edge so I wanted to make sure that I compensated for the extra you know trim around the outside of the button so having this was very beneficial but also it doubled as my template for my artwork so um, essentially that's what you see on the board now and again it came out amazing um, I, I had to I was considering um, getting like a vinyl cover or not a vinyl cover, but a, uh, an acrylic sheet uh, with holes drilled through it and everything, you know, just to protect the artwork underneath. Um, but honestly, because of the uh, just the, the high print quality and, the, and just the ruggedness of the of the, the printable vinyl, and then on top of that, putting um, a, a, a solid layer of of um, like coating on the outside of it, it was. It just made all the difference it, it saved me a lot of time and money <laughs> and uh, I don't know it just worked out great so naturally as soon as I got this done I wanted to make these pieces and then ended up making these pieces <laughs> and this is the very front uh, just directly underneath the control panel but the control panel kind of overlaps a little bit so it might be a little difficult to see but this is that front angle in the very front and then of course this is the very bottom um, these are the only pieces that have artwork, but like I said, I didn't do them all at once. I thought, oh, this would be cool. I'll just do this and stick with this. Okay, that turned out really cool. Maybe I'll do this too. Okay, these turned out really awesome, and somehow I was able to put my the vinyl actually on there effectively, so why don't I just keep going? And I ended up doing these three twos, and ultimately it ended up with what you see here. So one thing, though, that I... Um, I think is important um, think something looking back what I would do a little differently is that because I hadn't decided that I was going to do vinyl um, from the very beginning um, I would have done something a little different I would have applied the artwork vinyl to the pieces much earlier than what I did or I would have um, considered using a different kind of screw like the screws I have on there they look cool and I've showed and I've showed them off in previous videos but they have this kind of rounded top to them and it's fine they look cool um, but at the time I didn't really plan on having like a big sticker stuck to the side of them right so um, it when I finally did decide to do that naturally that sticker would bubble anywhere I was covering over those screws so naturally in future projects <laughs> Um, if I know ahead of time that I'm going to put vinyl on the outside, I'm probably going to use low profile screws where the screws are flush with the, with the unit so that this, the vinyl sticker will stick on and not be, you know, uh, won't get messed up by the, the shape of the screw underneath. Or um, I would consider even as soon as the pieces were done, uh, the side pieces, for example, were finished. Um, and, and sand it down to size before you know I would paint them immediately because you have to paint them MDF has this like um, it, it there's like this chemical that just kind of seeps out I don't know how, how to explain it but if you don't seal it or cover it with something um, it, it breathes a little bit and and from what I understand that get that can be kind of harmful and it messes with your anyways uh, so in the future I'm thinking either putting it on putting using different screws low profile head screws or um, putting it on really early and then just sticking the screws like like mounting everything together with the artwork already on it um, I think either way would probably work uh, honestly just using low profile screws will probably be the best option um, but that's just one of those small details that I've decided was 
worth considering next time around. The great thing about having this model, um, the, the template, so to speak, already pre-built, is that there's nothing about this model that I can't change. Um, so, for example, if I wanted a, a bigger um, control panel uh, and I was worried about the, the heavier weight or it overlapping a little bit more, I could actually add more to the general shape of it. I, all I have to do is just change the numbers. Um, and it'll widen things out. I can I can change anything and everything to suit any unique build that, or you know, unique problem that I come across. Also, um, just having a, a versatile uh, collection of art programs and art skills. Um, all of this can be switched out with whatever I want, uh, whether I design it myself or another artist. Uh, wants to be like, hey, I want my own arcade machine. Can you put this? Can you put my branding on it? Can you put my artwork on it? Absolutely. These conversations have put me in a position where I feel like oh, I, I should start putting together um, like a, a price sheet. Or, you know, kind of figure out the numbers of what it took for me to do this and and what it would take for me to make this happen for other people. So, um, good news. That's well underway. Um, there's even some branding that I'm I'm working on now. Some uh, some logo stuff. Um, but. And uh, the price sheet is pretty much uh, finished. You can actually look forward to seeing that here shortly. So whenever, as we continue on, um, you know, when it comes to just the Mammoth Press arcade behind me, uh, what's next, right? Uh, well, obviously playing it is what's next. Um, I've been playing it quite a bit. Um, I've been diving into the features of what it can and can't do, and there's actually very little it can't do. Um, things that I didn't even realize uh, that... I think are really impressive and I thought well you know I could just record a few videos of you know me playing games on it but you know how interested are you in watching me play with myself so I thought better yet it is a four player machine I have four players for a reason you probably guess by just looking at the stuff around it and behind it uh, but maybe I could make a few friends and maybe we could do a small series of uh, me and my friends um, playing games together but not just you know playing games uh, adding like interviews with people that I feel are important to me like very influential people uh, some of which I've known for, since I was a kid um, some of what I've known haven't known nearly as long but all of us have this uh, story like a history of, of gaming you know um, times when we were in arcades or, or playing console games that are really important to us so I want to capture that I want to I want to get to know these people a little bit more and I want to I want them to play their favorite games games that they haven't touched since they were young um, and I figured that would be a great series so I'm gonna start a brand new series doing that but it's not gonna be a, a, a new channel you'll be right here on the Mammoth Press channel and uh, so if you have any spe like favorite games of your own, like sh hit me up. Like you know, if you want to see some certain things played, certain games you don't think exist anymore, that you you know, or you have some interesting stories, like tell me all about it. Jump, throw it in the comments. Tell me about it. But in the meantime, um, look forward to a, a brand new series. And uh, again, thank you for all the support. Um, like this has been amazing. I've got like this is probably the coolest project that I've ever taken on and uh, I look forward to turning it into something like really incredible. Thank you.